The church is full of prayers, prayer books, and reoccurring practices. We have a church calendar, which means we revisit almost all of these things annually. So what then do we make of a verse in the Bible in which Jesus says that in prayer, we should avoid vain repetition, repetition, repetition. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 7, Jesus says that when we pray, we should avoid vain repetitions as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. This episode is about an English language issue. Hopefully it will be a helpful one to understand this verse, to understand a little bit more about prayer, and of course the need to read the Bible in the context of the church's teaching of it. Some Christians in traditional settings are often faced with the criticism that when we repeat prayers, when we read prayers from prayer books, that we are going against this verse in the Bible that says we should avoid vain repetition. To see this verse in Matthew as being against pre-written prayer or against prayer books is to completely misunderstand the verse. It is also to zero in on the word repetition from a contemporary English understanding and definition of the word. We're thinking of repetition as repeating something multiple times. That's not what's being said by the phrase vain repetition. The fact that biblical scholars, even in the Western world, understand this confusion over the phrase vain repetition is shown in that Bible translations do not use the words. It's been translated in different ways to things like empty phrases, meaningless words, or even rambling. That the Bible doesn't have a problem with repeated prayer is evident also in the fact that the Psalms are so often repeated by the people of God, and in the fact that the angels mentioned in the book of Revelation are repeating the exact same prayer over and over again constantly. And we need to look closely at what happens just after the words vain repetition, which is that it says that the Gentiles believe that they will be heard for their many words. Far from being a prohibition on repeated prayer, or prayer books, it's saying something very different. It is telling us not to ramble, not to babble on and on, not just to say words for the sake of saying them. One of the reasons we have pre-written prayers and prayer books is to keep our prayers focused, to keep our minds on track, to help us pray when we don't feel like praying, to give us words to express the deep feelings in our hearts when we cannot come up with the words ourselves. So with this understanding, we can see that vain repetition or meaningless rambling should be avoided not just in prayers written in books, but perhaps more so in prayers from the heart, because when we're just praying with our own minds, it is much easier to get a bit lost and to ramble on and on. It's not the amount of words that is the prayer, it is literally us that God is wanting to hear. And in the church, one of our most repeated prayers is one of the shortest, Lord have mercy. Every Christian should pray from the Psalms and the prayers preserved by the church. They should also pray from the heart in their own words. We need both. Every Christian should work towards praying ceaselessly so that every action, every interaction can become a living prayer to Christ, so that our lives are living prayers. A prayer can last two seconds. It can last all night. But what is going on is that it is us talking to God. It is fellowship with God. It is communication with God, and this grows us closer to him. Regarding long prayers, St. Augustine points out that it isn't the length that is the problem. For speaking much is one thing, and an enduring fervency is another. For the Lord himself continued a whole night in prayer, and prayed at great length, setting an example to us. St. Basil the Great writes that prayer does not consist of mere formulas of words. Prayer encompasses the whole life. St. John Chrysostom answers a question we might have about prayer. If he knows all that we know of, why must we pray? It is not to instruct him, but to prevail with him, to be made intimate with him. And St. Isaac the Syrian says that the highest form of prayer is to stand silently in awe before God. There are many ways of praying to God. There are many beautiful pre-written prayers. There are prayers that you will feel in your heart to pray. And there is the prayer of just standing silently in awe of God. And all of these forms of prayer are to be discovered through the church, which has been praying to God through Christ for 2,000 years. So if you want to pray more, as we should all want, then keep praying. Keep going to church. Discover prayer through the church. Talk to your priest about this and keep praying. Because, as St. John Chrysostom reminds us, prayer is about growing us closer to Jesus Christ.
Thank you very much for joining us once again here at Patristics. If you are enjoying this show and the shows that are coming up and the graphics that we're putting out online, please consider supporting us with a monthly cup of tea. There is a link in the description below. If you're interested in what kind of tea we're drinking today, it is a very simple black Ceylon tea with a dash of milk and a spot of honey. Perfect. It's gone a bit cold.